Carlos, um, obviously this team has a few homegrown guys, but but the majority of the club, yourself included, you know, came from other places. How would you say you guys as a unit have kind of, you know, come together and what's that dynamic been like with so many guys coming from, you know, outside the org and, and coming together? I'm sorry, what, what was the beginning of your question? I didn't understand. Oh, just in general, um, how would you say you guys have, have come together, you know, chemistry-wise, makeup-wise, you know, right. all from, from different spots together? Um, you know, we've had we, there's a few similar faces that guys have played together um, on this team. And uh, I came in last year. Uh, obviously, we had a, a rough year, but uh, I was welcomed with, with open arms. And then, we, you know, we added the likes of Juan Soto and a few other bullpen arms. And, I mean, it's, a, it's pretty easy to mesh with this group. Um, you know, I think the Yankees are very good at knowing who they want to go get and the kind of players they want to get. Um, so, yeah. Other questions? Meredith? Carlos, what have you learned from your postseason starts so far, and how do you apply that when you're approaching a lineup that has as much firepower as the Dodgers do? Yeah, yeah, the, this, this lineup's pretty potent. Um, they can definitely swing it, and they have a good idea uh, what the strike zone is. Um, you know, just kind of carrying, you know, that demeanor uh, coming into tomorrow, um, just trying to stay focused on pitch by pitch and uh, give my team the best chance to win. Yeah, just just keeping it under control and, 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 and just going out there and competing. Other questions? We'll go to the fourth row on your left, Carlos. Um, what are those challenges in facing a potent lineup like this where you have, you know, this, the superstars at the top and then depth throughout? Um, you know, it's just I think a lot of it has to do with I mean, it's just it, it's what's in front of you, and you just you go and and you compete. I mean, we're all pretty good, you know. I know they have good hitters, but you know we're we're here for a reason. I'm here for a reason. I think our lineup's just as good. Um, honestly, I think we're better, but I'm biased. Um, but you know, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm here. I'm I'm a big leaguer too, so I'm supposed to get those guys out. That's what I'm paid for. Uh, far back on your right, Carlos. Bill. Uh Carlos, there's a lot of talk around here, obviously, about Fernando Valenzuela, yeah. who 40 years ago threw 147 pitches in a World Series yeah. game. Do yeah. you, is part of you wish you kind of were around in that era to try stuff like that, or do you kind of like it better the way it is now? I mean, I, you know, I, uh, I definitely like the old school way of baseball, um, and you know, I have, I also enjoy the analytics of baseball and understand, you know, the moves within the game, and you know, third time through it, and all of this, you know whatnot in, in technology, but I, I, you know, I enjoyed when pitchers would go out there and throw 130 pitches and you let them go out and you, you let them get through seven innings. Cause I mean, if you didn't get through six or seven innings, it's kind of was like a bad start. It seemed like in, I mean, post or pre 2010, I would say, you know, um, there's a starter that didn't give you depth. And now, you know, you get through two times to the order and, and the bullpen's just so good nowadays and these guys just throw so hard, it's easy to, to go and rely on them as well. So, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's tough to, to the news with Fernando. He was so great. I mean, he had a big impact for the Dodgers and, I mean, what a, what a tremendous pitcher. First row on your left, John. When you look at the the success the Yankees bullpen has had, like, what is the level of confidence that you all have, and and how impressed are you by just the resilience that you've seen from them over the last couple of weeks and months? Yeah, I mean they've been so great. I mean in the ALCS they were so great. Um, I think I came out of game what was that game four, or is that game game four or five? I'm not sure. Was it? Uh, I think it was game five. Um, I came out in the fifth, and and they show they. They come in, they shut the door. I think Mark Leiter came in in a, in a big spot and, and uh, got out of the jam there. And they didn't give a run the rest of the game. And, you know, we were fortunate we won the pennant that day. And if we look back, I mean, throughout that whole series, I mean, they were they were pretty much nails. Uh, had a tough go. Was it game three? I mean, back and forth. What a great game game three was, if you guys remember, with the Paul Fry walk off. And then uh, during Kenzie Noel, the big uh, two run homer to tie it. I mean, that was probably the, the first. First, I, I don't know if they gave up any runs before that. They might have, maybe one or two. But, I mean, throughout the postseason, our, our bullpen has been something we've been really leaning on. Got five rows back on your right. Uh, Zach. Zach, Brazilian Euro Post. Carlos, you said you, you feel like you guys are better. Yeah, I mean, we, I, I, we wouldn't be in this position if we didn't think that way. I'm sure they think they're better than us, too. And that's how, I mean, that's how you have to approach this. Go ahead. Sorry. We'll go to Tyler on your right, 
Carlos. Carlos, when you think of the big picture about your season and, and coming off last year, what was the biggest reason that you were able to um, get back to being Carlos Rodon, and, and how hard was that to go through? Yeah, I think a lot of it had to do with uh, just confidence, confidence in, in my ability and, and in myself, um, just finding it and going out there, you know, and, and competing and, and proving myself that, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm able to, to still play this game because, you know, last year was yeah, last year was hard. I mean, it wasn't easy. Um, I wish I obviously I wish I'd performed better, but, you know, last year's last year and, you know, I had a goal stepping into this year that I, I just wanted to be confident and, and go out there and, and, and try to make every start I can. Um, so I, I think it w has worked out thus far, but there's there's one more thing that I know me and my teammates want to do. And so, Go up front on your left, Carlos, Ron. How many pitches into a start does it take you to decide or have a feel for what's working that night? Huh. Um, you know, it's it's hard. In the postseason, you're not really thinking about, like, this is working, this is not working. I think it's uh, – these postseason starts for me, it's just like, you know, what, what what's the pitch called and uh, I'm going to try to go execute it. I'm not really thinking, like, hey, my slider's not working or, hey, my fastball's not working. I don't, I th I, your mind doesn't kind of – my mind doesn't wander those spaces. Um, in the regular season, it's a little different. You know, game feels – not that it's – this in the postseason it's faster, but I think, you know, I think you have to be very – the blinders have to be up when you're in these postseason starts and you're just focused on, you know, whoever's calling the game that night that you, you just want to make that pitch. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if there's much time to think about, hey, this is working or this is not working. <laughs> like to the first start against Cleveland, what yeah. point did you realize you had um, your best swing and miss stuff that night? Um, I don't know. I just uh, – I'm trying to think back to that start. Um I think after there was a fastball, I threw to Fry, I think, up in the zone, and he swung through it. Um, I knew the fastball up was going to work, and then they, they had some – there was some slider chase and some slider miss. I mean, I can't remember. I can't really put a finger on um, an exact pitch in that game, but I just – the one I remember the most was the fastball up. I think it was in the first inning that I struck him out on. Um, and, you know, I, if we go back to Cleveland, you know, there's not much miss in that lineup. They – uh, they, they're 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 a contact driven lineup, but I, I yeah I just can't remember. A couple more, Carlos. Third row on your right. Hey, Carlos. Uh, with the playoffs, I assume there's extra adrenaline uh, yeah. working. Do you have to consciously tell yourself to kind of you know? Yeah, there's times where I'm like, hey, you gotta like slow down and back off because I can I you know I, I I I'm notorious for overcooking pitches and and trying to throw the ball too hard or trying to make your slider, you know, as unhittable as I can. So then I, I try to do too much, and it just kind of loses the profile and loses the effect, the effectiveness of the pitch. 